Hi, 1010 students. Um, not there back yet, obviously. Um, I should be back next Tuesday. I'm feeling much better, but still haven't had a, a good day since my crash uh, last weekend. Um, so I'm going to go over a few things. And the worst part about being home is my audio isn't nearly as good. And I've got the, the window open. And I've got this harsh lighting right here going on. And the sun will come in and out and change my lighting setup. But whatever. Maybe I should worry about more important things like teaching you instead of my lighting setup. Okay. So I wish I could be there to introduce uh, literature reviews for you, but I can't. So I'm going to do the very best I can here. So uh, we're going to scroll down into, uh, well, a few things. First off, um, before you leave for Thanksgiving break, you are going to finish your major assignment this semester, which is the literature review. The literature review is worth 30% of your overall grade. It should be a sample of your very best academic writing. So please don't take this assignment um, uh, lightly. So I want you to see a few things on there. So actually click on that. And again, I put this November 22nd. It's due November 22nd. Uh, signature assignment. It's going to be the literature review. You're going to write it in APA format. Um, uh, I'm going to explain a lot of this uh, during this video, but I do want to go over Oh, right there. Yeah, there it is. Literature review it should be six to eight pages in length, not including the title page and reference page, not including those. So be sure um, that you understand that. And that's really not that big of a deal um, when you break it up. So I'm going to go over how to easily get six to eight pages. So I even have a slide presentation for that. OK, six to eight pages. That's it. Uh, let me make my face a little bit smaller here. Uh, when you break this down, it's a lot easier to understand that this isn't that big of a deal. Let's say you're the overachiever and you do eight pages. Many of you are easily going to get eight pages. Um, when you break that down, one page for your introduction. When you write your introduction for this, uh, your thesis is going to be at the end, obviously, just like a five paragraph essay. But your introduction could be two paragraphs at this point. It could be a full page. So maybe one paragraph on the national debate and what's going on on the national stage when it comes to uh, books and education. And then maybe focus on that next paragraph a paragraph on what's happening in Utah schools. Then you can introduce HB 137 or HB 3. Oh, I can't remember um, the Sensitive Materials um, Act that was recently passed this year. And then you're going to take your, your body. And I want you to think of this as three short papers. Each one is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have each each of those body sections is only going to be two pages. And if you think, OK, well, I can just break it up and uh, I'm going to write two pages on this topic, two pages on this topic and two pages on this topic. That's another six pages and then a half paragraph conclusion. Um, if you go six pages and I recommend six pages, uh, it's only a page and a half on each of those subtopics. And I'm going to show you what those are going to look like in a second. And that's not going to be very hard. Each of you is easily capable of writing a page and a half on the following subtopics. So you've got your introduction is a page, two, two strong paragraphs, body, uh, three sections. Each one is a page and a half and then a half page conclusion. And you're at six pages. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Don't overthink this. So I have this um, and I'm going to give you access to this slide so you can work on so you can see what, what this will look like. So uh, your three sections. Now, I took these from minor. I do like these. I think this can make a very strong paper. Um, and if you break each one of these into a page and a half, you're easily going to be able to write it. So um, here's what I would do for each of these. What specific books are being challenged in Utah schools? That would be my first question. I would go Ken Ivory, and I would, uh, he was the one, the legislator who introduced the bill and got it passed. And so I would talk about the purpose, I would introduce that bill and what he is trying to accomplish with this bill. And then um, there is Courtney Tanner from the Salt Lake Tribune. This was published about 
uh, it was last month, early last month, Utah School District pulls 52 books. I've got a link to that um, in the Canvas assignment today, so you can always look at that. Um, and you can talk about the 52 books that have been taken off the shelves and kind of uh, categorize them. You can also go ratedbooks.org and you can talk about rated books and what ratedbooks.org is, is trying to accomplish. And it's helping parents see exactly the, the content that is in question and that they are trying to systematically remove. And then you can always go to Maya who wrote Gender Queer and you can talk about how a win or air talked about um they're banning their book and why they are arguing that that book should be available in schools you can easily write a page and a half on what books are being challenged in schools and why now the next section you're going to move on to is who has a responsibility to determine what k-12 through students can have access to in public school libraries um, Aaron Manning, parents must protect children from offens offensive content. That's an argument clearly about its parents job to do that. Elizabeth Harris and Alexander Alter uh, with rising books librarians. So then you've got this tension sometimes between parents, what parents want on the shelves and what they don't want on the shelves, and then what librarians want on the shelves and what they don't want on the shelves. So you can bring that up. Um, and then you can always move into that Salt Lake Tribune article, Utah authors access to books and information is basic to a healthy democracy. This one, if I were writing this paper, this might be my shortest section. This one might only be a page. So if I'm, that's only going to be a page. I'm going to need to make up for that in the um, uh, the previous one and then the, the the longer one. Now, the last section that I would do is do challenges, do these challenges um, violate the First Amendment? There's a lot we can write on that. First off, you can bring in Jason Groff. Jason Groff was the first article I introduced you to. He had the opinion piece in the Deseret News. You can write about him, his ACLU and the uh, article that he wrote um, where he basically talked about, we did this a decade ago in Davis County or Davis School District. We we sued Davis School District. We won. All those books were placed back on the shelf. Um, and then you can bring in an Ashley Beals memo to school officials in Utah. There's a lot you can summarize there. Um, you can talk about that memorandum, what she says. Uh, she makes the case that students do have access to their First Amendment um, in high school life or junior in, in K through 12 libraries. And then you can talk about the criteria that has been used to determine whether or not something is uh, unfit for libraries. And then you can talk about H HB 375 or whatever that is and how it uh, works with the Constitution or it doesn't work with the Constitution. Really, it didn't change anything. Then finally, I would move on to Utah authors, access to books and information. Okay, that's a lot. That's how I'm going to organize the paper that I would write for this. Okay, so now I want to go into the assignment you're going to do today. Um, before you come to class next Tuesday, um, you are going to write your introduction, which you should have already done last time, and you're going to write the first section of your paper. So clickety do dot day on complete first section of your literature review. Okay. Now, before you write your literature review, I highly recommend reading these three student literature reviews to get a sense of what these literature reviews look like. Um, whew. Gotta take a breath. Hold on. Okay. So all of these are previous students. Elijah uh, wrote his in the past about anxiety on the rise. And he was like, okay, anxiety is on the rise. What is bringing to this? So his introduction, he, he, he does this. And his thesis is pretty simple. The thesis for these literature reviews are, this is what this literature review is going to look over. This literature review will answer the following questions. Why are teens more anxious and depressed today? And can society do anything to get rid of that? And then here he answers this question. He's He's got the format right here. And then he's going to use all of the scholars in the literature review to do that. Um, now, if you wrote all of your summaries, this literature review should be pretty, uh, not easy, 
Um, but it should be a lot easier. Now you can't just copy and paste your summaries and then that's not going to work. It needs to read more like a discussion where you're transitioning from one to the other. Uh, and you're going to notice that the scholars are brought up several times. Um, so it's okay in your literature review if you bring up an article two or three times. That's how it should be happening. Um, let's move on. Sophia Reyes, mass incarceration, the causes and their effects. Uh, so read Sophia's and what and what she does in her literature review. Again, introduction. Um, and then she moves on. Look, her, her entire introduction is three full paragraphs. Um, now, I think she could have gotten rid of one of these stories. She did start with a, a, an eye-catching story. Um, she brings in two stories. I think she could have just done one. And then she transitions into uh, why it's important. And then he says, this literature review will address the following three major questions. Folks, you can do that for your literature review thesis. It's basically saying, here's what I'm going to address in this literature review. And then notice how um, harsh sentencing and excessive punishment for nonviolent crimes. So she does that. And then she's going to bring in all of the relevant literature and the scholars who have addressed that specific one. And then she moves on uh, Richard Nixon's war on drugs. And then she brings in all the relevant scholars for that one and so on and so forth. Then you're going to get Lydia Hunter's um, she did a great job on uh, sleep, I believe. Yeah, school start times. Um, if you read any of them, read Lydia's. Lydia's is short, it's sweet, it's to the point, and uh, you're basically going to be writing a paper like this. So hopefully after you're done reading Lydia's paper, you're like, you know what? I can easily write a literature review. Okay, so um, you are going to complete the introduction and first section of your literature review before class on Tuesday. That's going to be about three. Oh, I didn't write three. I'll, I'll change that. About three full pages. Now, you should have already written your literature review uh, for that. So I uh, please run it through Grammarly. Please, 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 please run it through Grammarly. So let me go ahead and click on this. Actually, all right, I've already clicked on that. I'll take forever. Uh, this is the template for the literature review, APA style. Uh, you guys know the drill for this. Um, so, and then title of the paper, and then everything right here. You'll notice you'll have three, or question one, or subtopic, question one, or subtopic one, subtopic two, and then subtopic three. So what I've already gone and done ahead uh, already done is I, I created mine. I'm going to show you what this is going to look like for mine if I were going to write this. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to title this paper simple. Uh, HB 374. That's it. Uh, sensitive Materials Acts in Schools, a Literature Review, Lake Bockle, uh, Weber State University, November 22nd, 2022. And then scrolling down to my first page here, and this title is the same. Introduction. I'm going to take two paragraphs and I'm going to introduce this. My first paragraph is going to be what it's looking like on the national level, what's happening. Um, I might even start with uh, Mouse. Mouse last year got a lot of attention. Um, and then what's happening on the national scene. Then I'm going to transition into what's happening in Utah. Then I'm going to introduce HB uh, 374, who did it, its purpose. And then I am going to make my thesis. This literature review will cover what specific books are being challenged in Utah. Uh, and then the next one, who has the responsibility to determine what books are appropriate for uh, K through 12 public school libraries and whether or not these challenges violate the First Amendment. And then I'm going to answer this question right here. What specific books are being challenged in there? Now, again, um, what I would do is come in here and use these three articles. Maybe that order, maybe not, I'm not exactly sure, but that's what I'm going to do. I can write, you can write a page and a half to two pages on what books are being challenged and why. That's pretty easy to do. And then when we come back next week on Tuesday, I'm going to have a look over some of your papers, answer any of your questions, and you're going to continue uh, working through your literature review. Now, if you want to change those subtopics, you can. I don't care. These are my recommended um, subtopics that I would do for this literature review. So I think that's everything. Um, good luck today. Uh, so you're going to work on this 
in class today. And oh, there were a few articles in there that I that I did not we didn't read. Um, uh, Courtney Tanner, uh, there was this one. You can always bring this in. You can always bring in more sources if you're having a hard time uh, getting enough sources. You can always find more. If you can't write enough and you're out of, uh, you can't get up to six to eight pages, you need more research. That That's what it is. So you, here's another one here. Uh, this is published, oh, just like two weeks ago. Yeah, just two weeks ago. Uh, Courtney Tanner. Um, and another one, uh, Richard Price, The Future of Book Banning in Utah. Richard Price is great. Um, they are a professor at uh, Weber State, I believe in political science. They use they, them pronouns. And they maintain this blog, Adventures in Censorship. Also, Richard has published like some incredible pieces. Um, what, no, where is this CV? There it is. Um, I can't find it, but he's actually, oh yeah, there it is, there it is. Um, these are his uh, bigger publications. Uh, Navigating a doctrine, gray area, fee speech, free speech, the right to read, and schools, First Amendment studies. So he's got several really interesting uh, publications. Now, you don't have to cite his, his research-based publications that were published in scholarly journals. You can just maintain, read his blog entries. His blog is much easier. It's much more accessible. Um, and so you can, you can do that. So I would recommend uh, this article right here, The Future of Book Banning in Utah. It's a very short blog piece. You're going to notice his language is a little bit more charged than when he writes for academic resources, um, but it's short and it's pithy and it's to the point. So those are the articles. All right. I've rambled on for way too long. I hope this video is less than 15 minutes. Let's see.